party. Are you waiting for mama to get home? Are the biscuits done? What could happen to you? We made drop biscuits this morning and they've risen like crazy. We didn't measure any ingredients. We just mixed them together really fast and threw them on the pan. <laughs> they turned out good. There's steam coming out of yours, that's true. I'm gonna give you a little bit of butter. A piece of honey, Rufo. A little bit of honey. I ate the bowl off mine. Uh, you ate the what? I ate the bowl off mine. Uh. You ate the butter off of it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put peanut butter on it. Okay. And we always do peanut butter on biscuits so that we have some protein to stick to our ribs, right? Yeah. Otherwise, so we're all hungry in a at 10 o'clock. Well, we're usually hungry at 10 o'clock anyway, aren't we, kids? Mm -hmm. Brighton has already eaten, and he is getting into the most fun and most dangerous thing in the house, which is my little tool bag that I left here by the stove. What are you finding in there, buddy? What are you finding? Ooh, look at that. That looks like a great toy for a baby, doesn't it? Ooh, that one, that looks like a great toy for a baby, too. Let's put all these away, okay? Thank you, buddy. We'll get you something else you can play with, okay? Put that away. We're putting it away. All right, come on. Oh, you still got one of those bits here. Let me have it. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Let me let me have it. Let me. I need it. Let me have it. Thank you. If you watched yesterday's video, you'll know that Brianna went to town and spent the night with a friend. Are you ready for Mama to get home? Where's Mama? Where's Mommy? Are you looking for crumbs? Don't cry, buddy. Look who's home. Look who's home. Look who's home. Nah. Mama's home. Justice is locked in the van. Unlock the van. Yeah, you can. Unlock it. Okay, now push it the other way. You're pushing it down. Now push it up. All right, good job. All right, get out. That's how you unlock it. All right, go say hey to your mommy who's home. And please don't play in the car, okay? Welcome home, Mommy. Thank you. Rawr! Rawr! Grace has really good eyes. There's a monarch butterfly. Who knows how far this monarch has flown. You know, it could be traveling from, from Quebec to Mexico. He's just like melting in my arms. You happy to see your Mommy? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Check out my office. I love my office. Here's the view on the inside. And here's the view out the back door. So today, we are going to make a long overdue coat rack for the front door. Oh, look what we found. It's just a box turtle. Oh, what do box turtles do? Oh, uh, they eat. What? They wander, they make babies, and it's probably looking for a spot to get down in the mud for winter now. So we're just headed up to our little rhododendron thicket up here. And rhododendron is a shade-loving, non-deciduous, non-conifer. I don't know what that makes it, but it's not a conifer. It doesn't have needles. It has leaves, but it doesn't lose its leaves in the winter time, so it's an evergreen. Normally you find rhododendron growing on the north slopes of a mountain. It likes the cooler, moisture climate, and here we are on kind of the north east slope of this ridge and here is the rhododendron and it is thick from here all the way up to the ridge but if i show you the other direction on the south uh, west slope you'll see there's no rhododendron over here what i'm looking at for are some nice natural crotches like this
I really do think there is something to taking responsibility for whatever impact you're going to have on the world we live in. And personally, I think the best way to do that is to have people who own their own land and who care about it and who take care of it. And that's what we aim to do here is to, as much as possible, take responsibility for our impact on the world. Now granted, we're still going to drive cars and everything, but I like this project because it's a small example of how instead of buying, you know, brass or steel metal hooks that were made in some smeltery in China and who knows, you know, what impact they're having on the environment there and what health um, impacts they're having on the people who work there, we are making our own hooks out of wood and we are having a small impact on the environment. The ro impact on the rhododendron is really minimal. Rhododendron grows back. I have cut it to the ground. It comes back. But the impact that we're having we're having it here where we can see it. We have to deal with any consequences that come from it. And we're gonna do this in a very responsible way. You think I got enough? I think so. I forgot to bring something to carry all these with. I thought of it before I left. I thought, bring a bucket or a bag. I forgot. I'm just gonna drop this birch tree right behind me and make a quick birch bark basket. We'll throw these in it and we'll get it down to the house. Right? Right. <laughs> okay. I got them all. That's not too bad. This is the spot where we found it. Yep. Put it down. Right in this little muddy place that he was in. Yeah. That turtle got a free adventure, didn't he? Yeah. There's a deer right there. With opening day like three weeks away, that poor deer doesn't stand very good chances. So here I am in my makeshift workshop. I'm gonna trim these down and I'm gonna turn them into little hooks. Now I'm just eyeballing these, but I'm gonna use these for patterns for all my others. <laughs> make kind of an angular or a multifaceted end on the hook and then I'm going to do the same thing on the top and on the bottom okay I'm kind of running out of light and time the next part of this job I need to flatten off the backs of my hooks so that they'll go against the board or against the wall and I'm going to try to use a little electric hand plane. I've never done this before. If you haven't realized, I'm actually kind of making this whole project up as I go. Next, I need to drill oh, two holes in each of these. So now I'm really running out of light, especially in that barn. I'm going out here to this old tobacco barn to try to find a board to put these hangers on so I have something to show for my work. That's wormy chestnut, but dang, it's ugly. The not so finished product. It looks really good though. Mm -hmm. Why think, isn't right, it boy? finished? I just cracked a couple of them, putting them on. I was doing it in the dark. 
Oh. But I, Cause I you have, put it in too deep. I have like, t I have like enough to do another one of these even though I cracked them. I have a oh, bunch more wait, hooks. Wait, can I have this one anyway though? Please? Yeah, you can have it. I'll just fix it up. Uh, no, I want it on the wall tonight. I'll put it on the wall tonight, but then I'll fix it. Okay. Uh, thank you. You're welcome. So, I took this out to the barn. I fixed some of the cracked pegs, and I shortened it just a little bit so it would fit in this space where Brianna wants it. I actually hadn't measured it at all before. I just made it at whatever length it came out to. Okay, I think it turned out pretty well. I actually walked outside to grab another screw to put into the wall, and I came back and the coat hanger had already been pressed into service. I put a light coat of olive oil on it because that's what I have on hand. I think it turned out pretty well. <laughs>